The Crooked Road is a driving trail. It's 330 miles long, and it connects 19 counties, four cities, and over 50 towns and communities. We've been very fortunate to have the Crooked Road here, uh, to pull artists, to pull venues, to pull community members together and say, we can take this music, we can take these aspects of our life, and we can show them off to the world. Certain styles that have become very prominent, um, and probably the first one worth mentioning is uh, Mother Maybell and her uh, Wildwood Flower. Then you have Piedmont uh, Blues uh, style of guitar, which is uh, more uh, finger picking. Lead guitar styles, which uh, came about a lot uh, with people being influenced by folks like Doc Watson. Um, <laughs> So I can play a little bit of uh, a beautiful old mountain tune that has all of those wrapped up together in it. It's called Shady Grove. What's remarkable about music of the Southern Appalachians is that there are many different geographic and ethnic influences that come to this region and work together to shape a really unique music style. The Germans and Scots-Irish and the English and African that came here, they worked and played together, and what we have today is a, a result of that mixing. The reason that we're here is because of the 1927 Bristol Sessions, which was the first commercially successful recordings of country music. A guy named Ralph Peer has this vision that he's going to record some southern mountain music and see how it goes. People came out of the woodwork, really, to, to downtown Bristol. He's strategic in putting himself here in the Tri-City area. He knows that he can have sort of convergence happen that he might not somewhere else. The fascinating thing for me is that the biggest portion of the original Bristol sessions were gospel. There's two kinds of music. It comes, it either comes from the church house or the beer joint, you know? And I think that a lot of this music was a little more, you know, go back to the Carter family in those early sessions, it was, it was more church music than anything else. And as it turns out, these recordings of Southern music is popular across the United States. I think what defines this area, certainly now, is the connection to place. A lot of that's tied to the topography of the mountains that 100 years ago created a fairly isolated region that's much less isolated now, but it's still those mountains that people define themselves by. And so the people who make this music do it because it speaks to them. It's something they love doing. It is a music about the people. It is a music about the land. It, it, it is rooted music and to be able to have your own communal voice, your own, you know, that you can say something. We are a culture of very hardworking people. Um, we mean what we say. We like to take care of each other. We're hospitable. We care very much about our traditions. It gets to the core of things, and then it becomes the influence of many others. The faith is intertwined with the music, and, uh, the, you know, to sing with soul and to sing with from the heart, it's the most powerful expression of the little human heart that we have is uh, the gift of song. <laughs> 